Hey all, so I'm going to continue to read from The Power of One More by Ed Milet, The Ultimate Guide to Happiness and Success. This is chapter one. I started it before, but my kids got me distracted, so I'm going to continue with chapter one. Your identity is shaped early in childhood. As a child, you were a blank canvas. You were impressionable, happy, and accepting. You had no reason to believe the eternal world was out to hurt you in any way. Gradually, you learned to function in the world based on what you were taught by your parents, family members, friends, teachers, and others with whom you came in contact. Of course, many people were well-intentioned. However, that doesn't mean what they taught you was always right. The fact is, nobody is ever always right. As a child, you accepted much of what you were told, right or wrong. Your identity became the good and the bad parts of how other people influenced you. The unfortunate thing is that you were defenseless. Your critical thinking skills did not exist to give you the tools you needed to survive in the world. As you grew older, you began to confirm your identity. If someone said you weren't a good student or a lousy athlete, that became part of your identity. You still didn't have the capacity to, to disavow what you were being told. You grew into adulthood, and you carried with you those beliefs about yourself. Your identity had taken root. Your limitations became a part of you. And because they were so ingrained, you weren't even sure where they came from. That's a lot of baggage to lug around, isn't it? By the time you were old enough and able to question your identity, you were living with the identity you adopted at a time when you didn't have a choice. Of course, this assumes you, you were even aware of how your identity impacts you. Many people simply go through life screwed up and unsuccessful and never quite knowing why. However, as a one more thinker, you are now aware and you can change your identity once you become intentional about it. Here's how. Adjusting your identity thermostat. I've touched briefly on your identity thermostat in the past, but now I want to give you more details on how this concept can work on your behalf. Your identity is the force that governs your life and regulates your results. Think of it like a thermostat. Your internal thermostat sends the conditions of your life. You walk into a room, and if it's too hot or too cold, you look for a thermostat to adjust the temperature to what you like. It doesn't matter what the internal conditions are. The temperature can be 100 degrees outside, but the thermostat is set for 75 degrees. It kicks on and the air conditioning cools down the temperature and regulates the environment. The same applies when it's 30 degrees outside. The thermostat kicks on and warms your surrounding to 75 degrees. Your life works exactly the same way. If you're a 75 degree person, you turn on the air conditioners of your life and cool it back down to what you think you're worth. This is what happens every time your, your results begin to exceed your identity. You unconsciously turn on the air conditioners of your life and cool it back down to what you believe you deserve. Much like a thermostat, your identity regulates your internal self-worth. It regulates your actions and results. Many people are under the false assumption that external factors are what regulates your thermostat. They believe that getting a promotion, getting married to the love of your life, or getting an advanced degree from the college determines their identity. If you don't raise your identity, then eventually you will turn the air conditioning of your life on sooner or later, and that temperature will drop back down to 75 degrees or some other setting you don't want, simply because you didn't take charge and decide what identity you wanted. However, if your thermostat is set the right way, it will transcend conditions and you will find success no matter what the external conditions are. The truth is that you can acquire all the talents, skills, and abilities you want, but until they align your, with your identity, you'll fall short of the goals you've set. That applies across the board. For example, think about your fitness identity. Let's suppose you lost 20 pounds at one time in your life. Despite being armed with the best weight loss recipes or workout regimens a year later, you added all that weight back on and you're right where you started. That's because when your fitness identity thermostat is set at 75 degrees, it means you're comfortable carrying 20 extra pounds. And try as you might, you'll always drift back to that 75 degree setting. 
you can take all the right act actions with diet and exercise, but if your internal thermostat is not set up for success and remains at 75 degrees, eventually you'll drift back to your old thermostat setting by eating the wrong food or falling out of a solid workout regimen. You'll use external circumstance to find ways to cool you back down to what your internal circumstances believe you're worth. Here's another example. Maybe you're doing well financially, but you can't seem to get to that next level of wealth you think you deserve. You may want $10 million in the bank. However, until you turn up your thermostat to believe your identity is worth $10 million, even if you make that much money, your thermostat will eventually cool you off to what your identity believes you are worth. It may take a few years, but eventually unless you change your, that internal thermostat, there's financial setbacks. Chances are these types of situations and many others are something you've experienced. There's no shortage of information, coaching, or paths to success in any part of your life. So it follows. The barriers to success are found inside of you. This is what you can do all the right things and still not get the results you wanted. Sorry, let me try that again. That is why you can do all the right things and still not get the results you wanted. Remember this key point. Unconsciously, we always find a way to get back to where our thermostat is set based on what we think we're worth. Simply put, you can't achieve 100 degrees of fitness or wealth with a thermostat set for 75 degrees of fitness or wealth. Your thermostat boxes you in until you can create a new identity that triggers growth and change. This isn't to say that you can't achieve success because you will in many cases. However, unless you adjust your identity down the road, your thermostat will bring you back to where your identity is set. Typically, most people blame external forces when this happens. Do these examples sound familiar? I tweaked my back and couldn't work out for eight weeks, and then I lost interest in getting fit. The economy turned, and I lost a ton of money in the stock market, so I gave up on my dream of being worth $10 million. If your thermostat isn't set high enough, you'll see these as coincidences, karma or bad luck that has conspired against you. But that's not what they are. If your thermostat is set high enough, these are little more than temporary setbacks. However, the difference between you as a one more person and everyone else is that you will view these as speed bumps on the road to your goals. You won't use temporary setbacks as an excuse to create permanent failures. You won't use temporary setbacks as an excuse to create permanent failures. You'll have the grit it takes to gravitate to where your thermostat is set and eventually you'll rise to that temperature. Remember, as a one more person, change comes from thinking and acting. This book is not about doing one more thing or the other. You must do them in unison. When you think and act in congruency, you don't cool your thermostat back down. Instead, you're best positioned to turn your thermostat up to achieve the results you deserve. The Trilogy of Changing Your Identity once you bind to the concept that changing your identity is the key to changing your life, the question then becomes, how do I readjust my thermostat to create my new identity? That process is anchored in a trilogy of core principles, faith, intentions, and associations. Faith, according to Matthew 1720-21, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing moves mountains quite like faith. The same applies to moving your thermostat so that you can move your identity to a new place too. If you're a person of faith, whether you practice Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, or any other faith-based teachings, fundamentally, you believe that your God loves you. As a part of my faith, I believe that I come from the most extraordinary DNA in the world, 
God's DNA. As an extension of this, I also believe that God did not make me in his image to live with a thermostat set at 75 degrees. My God and your spiritual deity who created us to live a full faith-based life with a thermostat set at 100 degrees. Many people say they lead faith-based lives, but how many lives of us say they have God and faith in all parts of their lives? Several people I know read the Bible, go to church, and are kind-hearted and loving people. But do these same people extend their faith into their beliefs about personal fitness, finance, relationships, and business? In many cases, the answer is no. One of the keys to changing your identity is to let faith move mountains in all parts of your life. Intentions. When our actions are based on good intentions, our soul has no regrets. Anthony Douglas Williams. I met many people who constantly beat themselves up for where they are in life instead of giving themselves credit for their intentions to move to a new identity. If this sounds like you, all you're doing is reinforcing your current identity, your 75 degrees life. Do those moans sound familiar? I'd give myself more credit if I've gotten in that promotion. My life is a complete mess since I got divorced three years ago. I'm a failure since I had to claim bankruptcy during the pandemic. You're not laying yourself up off the mat when you do this. It's a dead bang loser of an approach to life. You're not being fair to the person who matters most. You. Thinking this way creates a downward spiral, and the further down you spin, the harder it is to climb out of it and create a new identity. You'll accept frustration. You won't want to be around people. And quite frankly, most people won't want to be around you. (laughs) Instead of soaring on life, flip your script. Tell yourself you intend to do good and to serve. That you intend to create a thriving business and have money in the bank. You intend to treat the people around you with care and are worthy of a loving and caring relationship. Apply good intentions to all parts of your life and then watch what happens. Your intentions will set your mind to work, creating your new identity. Your brain works on what it is told. When you tell your brain what you want to attract, it will design internal messages that will feed the good parts of who you are and manifest themselves in a new identity over time. Intentions are the currency that lets you make deposits in your identity bank. Instead of you creating a run on that bank that will eventually drive you into identity bankruptcy. Associations. Consider the words of T.F. Hodge, what surrounds, what surrounds us is what is within us. You can't possibly stay at 75 degrees if you hang out with people operating at 100 degrees. Through proximity, you absorb the traits, actions, and beliefs of the people you associate with. Consciously and unconsciously, their knowledge and ideas become a part of who you are. This is why you should seek out quality associations that can either directly or indirectly help you grow to be the 100 degree person you're meant to be. The other side of this is that you want to raise your thermostat and change your identity. You may need to say goodbye to many of the 50 degree people in your life. Yes, I know that can be a hard thing to do. Until you clear out space in your life for the right associations, you'll be mirrored in relationships that how outlive their purpose and now hold you back. I'm not saying that part is easy, but at times it's necessary. The other way to approach this is to reject 50 degree behavior and raise other people's thermostats instead. This is an especially viable approach when you're dealing with family members or lifelong friends where saying goodbye could be difficult. The bottom line is that you're a reflection of the people you associate with. If you associate with people who elevate you and make your thermostat rise, then you're on the right path to creating a new identity. Once you've armed with awareness of the trilogy, you can only move forward if you adjust the level of self-confidence, you have to change your identity. Self-confidence is the un- unfiling factor. I go into greater detail in Chapter 12 on habits, but self-confidence and how it relates to identity are crucial concepts worth repeating. The first thing to know is that identity is different than self-confidence. Identity is what you believe you're worth. Your internal thermostat, self-confidence, is the means to deliver on it. 
Self-confident people share one habit in common, and that is the ability to keep the promises they make to themselves. When you're in the habit of keeping promises you make with yourself, you're on the pathway to self-confidence. Self-confidence is also a form of self-trust, and if you can't trust yourself, you need to do some hard thinking about your life. It also follows that if you're timid, you won't act. If you have doubts, you'll paralyze yourself with fear. Doubts are the products of external factors in your life. They are incubators for negative thoughts. When these negative thoughts grow, they take over all your thoughts and your mind descends into unproductive and damaging places. That's why you must guard your life. Full out the mental weeds that threaten to take over the good parts of your psyche. You may not even... You may not get them all, and that's okay. Self-confidence is not about doing away with fear or timidity. It's about moving forward anyway because of the agreements you made with yourself. The other critical thing is that self-confidence is generated from within, and because it's an internal emotion, you can stack the deck in your favor. Ralph Walter Emerson put it this way, what lies behind you and what lies in front of you pales in comparison to what lies inside of you. Let this sink in. You are the only one that gets a say in how much self-confidence you want. When you break internal agreements, you're only fighting with yourself. If this sounds a bit crazy, that's because it is. Wouldn't you rather save your energy for the other battles you're fighting? Like, Like most things in life, when putting a promise to yourself, the first step is always the hardest. I guarantee that once your train of thought pulls out of the station in your head, you'll find the momentum you need to act. You'll see results as you develop a new identity. Those results will be the fuel fuel that keeps that train moving on down the tracks. The opposite of self-confidence is self-sabotage. It's like a computer virus that lurks inside many people and is only triggered when you try to move forward with the important part of your life. Self-sabotage triggers this encouragement and doubt, the mortal enemies of self-confidence. Burnham Street Medea Media founder Shane Parrish perfectly described how these things could damage you when he said, optimism might not make you successful, but pessimism will ensure you don't succeed. When you self-sabotage, you dial down your thermostat and deny yourself the bliss that was headed into your life. Maybe this is you. Perhaps it's somebody you know. Some people just have a knack of forgiving a gift and then finding a way to undermine the outcome. The worst part is that the same people seem to repeat this type of thing over and over. They're labeled a hot mess or somebody who hasn't gotten their life together yet. In reality, they've just dialed their thermostat to what they believe you're worth of receiving. How often have you seen somebody you know meet the woman or the man of their dreams only to cheat on them, be gross and inappropriate, or downright rude? Do you know people who have made a pile of money but then go on a self-destructive spree using drugs and alcohol, reckless spending, and gambling their wealth away? Most of us have also heard of cautionary tales of pro athletes who don't train or eat well or have, or who overindulge in vices, and in some cases, it costs them their lives. They're all guilty of self-sabotage because their lack of discipline is a lack of self-confidence that does not match up and support their identity. Their internal thermostats match the initial success they've enjoyed. Eventually, that thermostat resets itself and the person crashes back down to where their thermostat says they should be. It's sad when this happens because it doesn't need to be this way. Here's an exercise I use to destroy self-sabotage, discernment, and doubt. I pay attention when I have a self-sabotaging thought. I mentally record that thought. Then I visualize and see myself scratching it out. The first time I record the thought and strike it out, I'll cease. I'll still see it. So I do this repeatedly as many times as it takes until I can no longer see the thought because it was so marked over and blacked out. When I get to the to the point where I can't see it and the thought has been stricken from my mind, my mind no longer lives with me, lives with the thought, and the thought lo- loses its limiting power on me. To successfully align with your one more identity, you must keep the right promises with yourself. You must eliminate negatives and create an environment where self-confidence becomes an asset instead of one more thing you fear. Now that you know more about how self-confidence and identity work together, it's time to look at misconceptions that can skew proper thinking. Misconceptions about self-confidence and identity. Recognize and reject these misconceptions and you'll fortify your quest for a new identity. 
I am what I possess. Lots of people think self-confidence and identity to their possessions. They make the flawed assumption that the more possessions they acquire, the higher their self-confidence will be and the more perfect their new identity will be. That's not the case. It's a hollow approach to self-confidence identity. There's absolutely nothing wrong with acquiring material things. I would be disincidious if I told you that what I don't do is link my possessions and material wealth with my self-confidence and my identity. I conscientiously keep them separate, and so should you. I am my accomplishments. This is a horrible trap to fall into because all your life, to feel good about your self-confidence and your identity, you're going to have to have an insatiable need to keep accomplishing things. Keep it simple. You are you. You were put on this earth to do great things, but feeding your ego is an insidious trap. But by all means, ex- attempt great things, accomplish great things. Just don't get caught up in patting yourself on the back that you lose the humility you should have. Remember, it cannot be taken away in an instant. And if you use your accomplishments as a crutch for your self-worth, that fall will be hard, I guarantee you. I am what other people say I am. Wrong. The essence of self-confidence and internalizing your search for a new identity flies in the face of the belief. Forget the ego strokes. Don't base your worth on social media hearts and likes. Don't beg for compliments. It's a cheap and needy way to live your life. When you do, you're doing the opposite of improving your self-confidence and designing your new identity. What I look like... and especially to her women who are bombarded with television programs, blogs, podcasts, social media, and magazines, all of which place an extreme focus on external beauty. Here's the real deal. True beauty comes from within. Your beauty comes from your soul. Intentions, your capacity to give, how you treat people, your beliefs, and your kind heart. It's not bad to work on your health, lose weight, dress in nice clothes, and pay attention to your grooming. The trick is to do it for you and nobody else. Remember, you are defined by your content of your character and not by the reflection in your bathroom mirror. As a one more thinker, your identity is foundational to who you are. Use the trilogy and apply self-confidence to find the right temperature on your identity thermostat. When you do, you're well on your way to not only to, not only to creating your best identity, but also to leading your best life and that is the end of chapter one of the power of one more with ed millette i got the hardcover book on amazon the day it came out i've been posting on youtube um the introduction in the first half of chapter one so i'm going to maybe figure out how to upload it to anchor and to youtube i don't know if that's possible maybe i'll have to do another video i don't know obviously i'm just starting out on youtube and this podcast thing because i've been wanting to for years now so it's all new to me so trying to figure it all out but um at least i'm doing it right all right well If you guys want me to continue reading, let me know. If you don't comment or like or something, I'm not going to know. And then I'm just going to post it on YouTube. Or you could just look for me on YouTube if you want to hear more. Um, People have been viewing it on YouTube. So it seems to be working out there, if nowhere else. All right. Have a great night. I got to get some sleep because my kids will be up soon. Bye.